So here we have the uh, barbell uh, bench press. We're using a flat bench for this demonstration. You can also use an incline bench, a decline bench, and this will target slightly different tissue. Uh, we're going to show the setup for a uh, bench press involves a couple of catcher arms again like we had for the back squat. This is to provide you with a level of safety and confidence that if you are chasing that last rep and you fail the last rep that you're not going to end up injured uh, in the pursuit of your gains. So we will also just show the configuration for, uh, here we go. Uh, starting the lift and making sure that the height of the hooks are also set correctly. You want the height not to be too high uh, that you can't actually get the bar off the hooks easily and likewise return them easily but you don't want it too low either because that can also be annoying. The height of the catcher arms needs to be sufficiently high that you can slide out from underneath it should you need to or at least not be crushed um, by the weight of the bar if you're trapped underneath it for any length of time. Uh, if you are performing uh, this, this exercise without catcher arms, which is not advisable, um, it would be very wise to at least not have uh, the, the clips on the end of the bar. That gives you the opportunity, at least if you can get one side, leave it up, you can actually slide and shake the, uh, the plates off the end of the bar should you need to try and escape it in some sort of emergency situation. But it's far better to just avoid that situation in the first place by having correctly set up catcher arms. A key part of any bench press is proper core bracing. Uh, this is also known as leg drive. Uh, to perform this technique, we're going to bring the balls of our feet back behind the knee. Uh, we're going to allow us to turn the core on with a slight arch to the back and pushing the pelvis forward. Overall, this should allow you to maintain a rigid core which then gives you that lateral stability for bracing against the eccentric load uh, of the lift. If you find that there are difficulties in maintaining uh, that arch, you can actually take a rolled up towel or some sort of cushion and actually place it underneath the lower part of the thoracic spine to help accentuate the shape. So at this point, the pelvis is tilted into a slight uh, posterior pelvic tilt. The core should be nice and rigid and there should be a nice arch to the spine and the balls of the feet are tucked behind the knee. So this is one solid piece and when you start the lift, you're pushing all the way from the feet all the way through to the palms of your hands throughout the lift. One solid so to start the lift we want to start with our eyes immediately underneath the bar as a good beginning point uh, you start with hand grip now there are many different uh, grips that you can use many different spacing depending on the target muscles when you're performing a bench press you can have a lot of choice and a lot of flexibility in the target muscle group between pec and your um, anterior delt bias. So you can have a more shoulder dominant press, you can have a more chest dominant press. Uh, this will also have different levels of activation for the bicep and the tricep in different parts of the uh, concentric and the eccentric phase. So for the first, uh, first demonstration here, we're going to perform a uh, slightly narrower grip with the elbows further down, closer to our uh, belly button and hips. And this is going to shift the bias towards a shoulder focused press, uh, as you will see. So the elbow is going to come down. And we'll see that the movement is largely using the shoulders for the concentric phase. So re-rack. You can still use that grip and bring the elbows up higher um, and focus more on bringing the shoulders together, which is going to make it more chest uh, biased. But you can also start with a slightly wider grip. So there are markers on the bar. We can either start and pick a distance from the inside of the grip, or we can start from the outer markers and pick a distance from those outer markers and come in. 
but you want them to be exactly the same on both sides. We want the middle of the bar to be in between your eyes and in this, to make this a bit more chest bias, yep, with the wider grip, the anterior delts are less involved in the lift and the pectoral muscles are more involved in the lift. And the focus when we're performing this movement is consciously trying to think of bringing the shoulders, trying to bring your armpits together. And that is involving the pectoral muscle. Muscles. So we'll demonstrate what a failed rep will look like and some sort of bailout. So with the catcher arms correctly set up to a height where it can sit just over your neck in the event that you fail the rep. So at this point, you can either try to slide out and that's fine. The other alternative is while you are having a nice little nap underneath the bar, your muscles are refilling with ATP, PC and glycogen. And if you spend enough time there safely, you're going to regain enough strength that you can re wrap the bar safely. And that would normally take, it could be you know, 30, 60, 90 seconds, depending on the intensity and the duration of your set prior to the rep failing. So the alternative to all of that is to have a spotter, if you're lucky enough to have a gym buddy with you, uh, that can help uh, re-rack the bar for you in the event that uh, you fail the rep. Now, they don't actually require a huge amount of strength. It's amazing what just a couple of, couple of grams even of, uh, of force removed from the lift can provide as an assist to help you re-rack the bar. Uh, again, this is a staple exercise that's normally included in any exercise routine.